What's up, Shadab? stress I am here doing what I do Hey, what's up, Leandro? Oh, nice. Working on this power stone cover. Yeah, I saw it. Talked about on the morning podcast. It was good times. Hey, what's up, Hector?
Ah, thanks, Lana. That's kind of the whole goal. You know, and I think that idea is, it catches on every year a little bit more, you know? Like, when I first started doing them, people were like, why are you putting up 10 hours of drawing? No one's got time for that. I'm like, that's not really... It's not really the point. Like, I really expect people sitting there staring at the fucking screen for 10 hours. You know? It's like... Like, if you're drawing, you're gonna sit there for hours on end by yourself. And, you know, you, you don't always got the time to catch streams when people are available and hanging out with them. So it's like, here you go. You know, and here's me working on, you know, this stuff in real time. Well, you work on your stuff on real time. You know, sometimes you can hang out, sometimes you can't. But they're there. You got time for that. But I, I've seen, you know, as... As YouTube kind of like, you know how it is, man. You know, one thing catches on. So like, as everyone kind of latched on to doing, you know, two minute videos that cut out like 90% of the fucking work, you know? I'm right there with you, Max. You know? This is when I used to go to Comic-Con and watch all the artists when I was a kid at San Diego Con in the 90s. All the artists that still had deadlines would be at the table working on their shit, so... I just sit at their table watching them. And I've had discussions with YouTube about it every six, seven, six or seven months. You know, we're on. The, they call me on the phone. Let me know. You know. What I could do to help improve, and I'm like, I'm not doing any of those things. <laughs> How you doing, Chris? Which is usually all stunt-based stuff, like, you know. And you could have, like, you know, work, you can go to workshops, and you got and I'm like, ah, oh, guys, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a working professional. Like, I'm just, the way I look at it is like this. This is like, you know those pizza shops where you can look in the window and see a guy making the pizzas? That's, that's it. There you go. Yeah. If people have questions, I answer them. Make little art tip videos. But that's about the end of it. It's so like as Black Panther came out, I'm supposed to spend my entire week drawing just Black Panther art to promote myself, you know? Like, that's not happening. <laughs> ah, thanks. Yeah, it, jump, it jumps between heart and round shape, depending on the promotional art for the games. Like, it always depends on who's doing it. I wonder how that worked out. But I like the heart better, so I stick with the heart. Oh, what'd you think about that, Leander? Yeah, I agree. It really solves the problem of how do you get that texture? Really what we're talking about is noise, right? Noise. Keeping noise. 
solve problems. And you don't have to worry about having some pencil texture, you know, in your stuff that might slow down drawing or gets weird after a while. Well, I'm having Brandon upload all the 60-second podcasts onto this channel, so there's a playlist, and he's getting all the Dragon Ball Zs and everything else up, so they'll all be here, too, you know, if you ever want to keep track of them. Long time ago. Played it a little bit. Didn't never beat it. It's one of the ones I put in the rental.
Yeah, I rarely have enough time to beat games these days. Although every now and then some game gets me, like Mario Land, 3D Mario Land got me. You know, like I think I beat that twice. Yeah, my buddy Paul was really into that series, um, and Persona. Some of the side RPGs like Vandal Hearts, and Wild Guns. I liked Wild Guns a lot. Wild Arms, yeah. Right, wild, Arms. wild Guns is another game which I like too. Wild Guns is a different game. Lesser known PS1 title. The PS1 or Saturn? Oh, sorry, Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo game. Um, it was kind of like an Operation Wolf style game, but with like mechs in the West. I mean, if you like uh, Trigun, Wild Guns kind of had that feel. Before that was a thing. Yeah, so if you check out Wild Guns on Super Nintendo, it's it's a shooter, so like, you know, like, it's got a reticle, you kind of move it around and shoot things. Um, Would have really been great to have like motion tracking on that back in the day. But it's got like giant mechs in the Wild West and shit. It's pretty cool. One of those, one of those forgotten gems, folks. Pretty well liked. People remember. Yeah, Dark Cloud and Dark Cloud too. I 
in Rogue Galaxy. You could almost call Rogue Galaxy sort of a pseudo sequel to Skies of Arcadia, at least in terms of, you know, tone. But they're definitely dope. Yep. It's one of the reasons why I pushed so hard to get level 5 I know, featured in game. I mean, the Dave used to work at Play Magazine, so Dave was always behind level 5. But we were able to do an in-depth interview with them when Nino Cooney was first announced. Because I, I pushed Dave, and I'm like, dude, Nino, level 5 is the new square. I mean, like, after all of these years, they finally took the reins, you know. And... Interesting though, uh, here in the Nino Kuni 2, you're able to build an entire town, so that's pretty dope. I don't like that handle. Of course, that was like eight years ago, yeah. And obviously Dragon Quest A, you know. Well, same. Level five did it. You know? Level five was the tech behind eight. Oh, well, nine on the uh, the DS is fantastic as well. Completely different, but really good. And then uh, I hear great things about eleven. Hey, what's up? I'm probably gonna sit through this the process of installing Saturn emulation so I can play the Final Fan the Shining Force three fan translation now that they're all complete. Yeah, the last story was probably their better game, though, even though it has waggle controls. If you've ever played the last story. I oh, know, Miss Walker. Sakaguchi song.
Shining Force 3. Oh, last story. The last story. On the Wii. So I had waggle controls, which, you know, suck, but I really liked it because it was set in one city, which has always been like my favorite little template for RPGs and stuff, you know. It'd be great if they made a remaster where I could just use a controller. <laughs> I don't like waggle. This shit's for VR. Which I like in VR, but I don't like faux waggle. Yeah, I like smaller stories. That's just me. But it's still cool. Yeah. device that I work on. Uh, Cintiq, 22 inch. No touch. Alright, later Landry.
reason for going all digital with cover because uh, how do I say this? They like cleaner covers. So what I do now is I tend to draw digitally, then I print it out and ink it traditionally so I have a physical copy. The publishers prefer the cover arts to be cleaner. Unless it's, you know. Plus when there's tons of shit to draw, man, like this one's gonna have a bunch of plushies and giant controllers and stuff. Man. So. Now, if I was working on something that was more grittier, say like Batman or something, then that would be traditional covers because then I'd get all that grit and texture and stuff in there, you know. And there you go. Do you ever sketch, then color? Do I ever sketch, then color, and line art last, Revex? What do you mean? That's generally how I do a lot of my my work, is I'll do a color roughy and then I draw right over it. It's 99% of my time. On this one I had to kind of start with a silhouette and just draw it because I don't have time. That's how I did this cover. This cover was started with the color sketch. So, see, I did this color sketch first. And then I drew right over it to do the cleanup. And then did high res colors. So that's how that got done. This is just going to have a blue sky, green grass, which I've done a hundred times, so I can kind of omit some of that process and just kind of get on with it. But if you look at any of the covers I've done before, even, even the last few Megavisions covers, like, um, they all start that way. Like, I just, I'm under a deadline, so I had to, like, skip that process on this one. But if you look at, like, the Berserk. The Berserk started with a basic silhouette. Like that. And then I do a color roughy. And then I do my line arts. These are traditional. And then final color. So. And then uh, the Wonder Boy. So I tend to always start off with the color roughy, but on this particular case, again, I'm just under a little bit of a deadline. 
So digital lines and final color. Yeah, no problem. But yeah, that's generally how I start. But on this one, it's not a lot of time. I prefer to blob things in color and then draw over them. Yeah, well, it's it's easier too because then I can show, you know, clients where I'm going towards, you know. Um Another thing with this too, the reason why it's sort of in black and white versus color when I start is I am doing a lot of concept art right now for different companies and sometimes they don't want it. they think if I spend any time coloring I'm spending more time on it than I should be and so I'm just working out some techniques here. But at the very least, I mean like I said I blob in silhouettes and I tend to like I prefer on any cover to work out the color before I start and to design it with the cover in mind, the color in mind, the color in mind. I'm glad to hear it. I'm hoping to influence a whole generation of artists <laughs> to get back at all the art directors who talked a lot of shit to me about that process early in my career. So then you just duplicate this and merge down. Yeah, it's just a lot of endless, endless stuff, endless drawing.
No, I'll continue that after this. I can only do one thing at a time. And this is an actual deadline, so... It's my last cover. I've been contracted with Mega Visions. I can't... I can't juggle between two covers at the same time. And freelance. Like, it's just too much. So... I'll finish this and then go back to Darksiders. And that's it for contract cover work until... They figure out what they're going to do. So. so I should be able to finish this cover sometime between this week and early next week at the latest and then Back on Darksiders, we'll wrap that up, and then move on to the X-Men stuff. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, the first cover I did at play was when we covered Darksiders 1, and Joe did his Darksiders cover. I did the alternate shitty cover. But... They gave us a, uh, they gave Dave a, uh, replica sword. His sword. So I got to, like, I was swinging it around and shit. It's fucking heavy as fuck, dude. And it was huge. When I was doing game fan, we had this the whole the whole business was put like in this. We called it a bunker. It was like a office with the storage in the back kind of thing. But I'd be in there for like a week, you know, making the fucking issue and living in that bunker and and um, spend half my night when I get bored swinging the sword around. <laughs> I don't like a fucking two year old, you know. It's hilarious.
I'd play the uh, Death Magnetic album up real loud, you know? <laughs> Two in the morning. Yeah, I'm not trying to get into trouble with my wife. <laughs> it's a whole other thing.
Oh, oh thanks for it. Nice. This great success. I'm using a Cintiq 22 inch no touch. I bought my first Wacom in 2001. Um, used a Cintiq in 2003 at Seagraph but couldn't afford one until 2008. And I've been using Cintiq since 2008. Mostly to fight carpal tunnel. I have iPad Pro, but I prefer the Cintiq.
depends on what I have to do. You know, I mean, I work on my freelance stuff uh, 8 to 12 hours a day, give or take the projects. I try to stick to 8 and write for 2, but it depends on free, on deadlines and stuff. Sometimes I'm coloring, sometimes I'm drawing. <clears throat> sometimes I'm doing graphic design here and there. You know, not much, but... But I, I work about 60 to 70 hours a week. Oh, thanks. It's my take on a rogue from Power Stone 2. Power Stone, whatever. If you remember that game. Some music? Nah, I don't play music when I stream because I get DMCA'd. So you can leave whatever music on you like while I drum. Half the time I listen to stuff, half the time I don't. Most listen to audiobooks and podcasts when I'm working. Yeah, it just takes time, man. You know, you gotta have a process, you gotta condition yourself, you gotta have specific goals. Yeah. Gotta make sure that, you know, it's a productive six to eight hours, not just farting around. It can go longer. The problem is that I get carpal tunnel when I start to push too hard. So I can do 12 to 16 in short bursts, but 
long term it's just it's not good for the health as I've learned over the years How long did it take you to find process mixing in digital tradition? Well, pff, I'm still working that out. I mean, it just, it depends. Like, what I really try to do is keep my processes as similar as possible. More than trying to mix them, I have mixed them. Like I could scan in Copic markers and then paint over them, and create some kind of hybrid thing. I've done that. Um, at this point, it's really in terms of like detail, you know, detail. goal but I don't think that ever goes away I wouldn't say I've figured it all out one is better for the certain things the other like you know color I like things to look as much like they need to look for the thing so like when I'm doing color pencil I want that to be color pencil I don't want the color pencil to look like my watercolors or I don't want my watercolors to look like my digital art you know And so it's been like a matter of like me saying, okay, what do I want my art to look like? And then, you know, testing little pieces. You'll see me do it all the time. Like I'll constantly test and try it. one thing or the other. Um, each one informs. I develop digital tools that I bring into my traditional drawing and I, traditional drawing techniques that get reapplied. Like this you know, the erasing at 75% and drawing at 65% opacity is just to mimic how I draw. You know, I tend to draw like in red pencil, erase, and then ink right over. So it's a very similar technique. So in that case, I've been blurring these processes. I first started really mixing that process from, like I said, 2008 when I first got my Cintiq because I was getting carpal tunnel. And so I would draw like basic contour outline sketches for the comic and then I would scan it in and do inks and thick and thin digitally. Um, eventually I did it all digitally and then I went back and started doing things all. Once I figured out how to like eliminate drawing, I was, was it pressing too hard. I learned how to draw a pen so I was able to like not press very hard. I was going to go back and do more traditional art. No, it's not just you. It's just, it's, um, I think that's the other thing too. Like the whole reason why I even got this YouTube channel is just to try to like let artists know, like, hey, you know, you're not all like alone. You know, we all have like a lot of similar things, you know, that aren't covered in art books. I'm not a very clean inker. I'm not a I'm not a, I'm not an inker at all. I learned to draw with pens out of like survival for my hand. But if I want super clean professional inks, this is the only way I can do it, folks, digitally. You know? I am not gonna go out there and pay an inker and I, I there's just I got no budget for that. I have to do everything myself. I gotta draw it, color it. It's just a way industry is for some some artists like myself uh, 
This is just a basic Photoshop round brush set to, like right now I have it at 80%. I generally sketch with 65%. So what I'll do is I'll draw at 65%. It's basic Photoshop round brush. There's nothing to it. I set it to 65% like this. So you get transparencies. And then as I'm drawing, I have my eraser set to about 75% and I'll erase and then draw over it. So if I wanted to clean up this this right here, I can go like this, right? And then see, I can erase it once or twice and then come in there just like you would with an eraser and it'll have those little bits back there and you can clean it up. And so by doing that, it gives the sense that it's like a pencil, but without pencil textures and, you know, all this stuff trying to like, it's not the look of the pencil, it's what, how you cr draw with one, you know? And you get all these extra bits and stuff that keeps it from looking super clean and dead. You know, you get those sketch lines. And look, if I want to clean it up a second step, like you can see this is super rough. I'm, I'm drawing over and cleaning up. Just as I'm cleaning up, I'm trying to keep it on one layer as much as possible. Erasing with 75%, drawing back over, you know. I crank it up to around 85% when I'm doing like outlines. I mean, when you ink, the ink is 100% transparent. I mean, opaque, it's not 100% opaque. So there's, you can see into the inks. So. So it's very simple, very, anyone can do it. You don't need some special brush. You don't need any specific program. I'm just trying to recreate the way that I, I draw, you know, traditionally. Just, I'm able to zoom in, you know, work on a larger canvas to keep it all clean. And then these days, uh, I'll turn on Lazy Nozomi Pro, as you can see here, uh, pressure gain. So this doubles the pressure without me having to press hard, you know, or adjust the firm settings on my Wacom. So this double pressure, then I'll keep it between 2 and 12. If I'm sketching 2, 12 if I'm doing cleanup on this pressure. And that's it. And that's really helpful, so you're not. I'm not pressing hard. I can press really light and get smooth, strong strokes, you know. And I still have to zoom in, you know, to get these clean lines, but so what? You know? Very simple techniques. And then I'm just adjusting them as I work, you know. So when I go to blob in a silhouette roughy, I'll turn off Lazy Nozomi Pro completely and crank my opacity up to 100% and just block in some silhouettes. And then I'll turn the opacity back down to 65 and turn on Lazy Nozomi to, to sketch over that, you know? What I'm not doing is trying to find some one-all thing for the computer to do all the work for me. You know, I'm not using a tapered brush, so I'm trying to ink every line in one stroke and get those perfect brush strokes with one. Like I'm just drawing an outline and doing thick and thin the same way I would do traditionally. And so, so long as you keep, you know, a lot of similar techniques to how you draw traditionally, uh, as you draw digitally, it'll all look, you know, the same. It'll all have a similar feel. You know, some will be cleaner and you'll be able to do more details with the others. Some will have that cool mixed media feel and be rougher, but... I'm not 
drawing differently. And that's taken years to work out. Like even this process now is rather recent. This came because I did a lot of Transformers covers last summer that was killing me. And I was like, okay, I gotta speed this up a little bit. You guys can see, like, the brush is just a basic Photoshop round, you know, transfer, dual brush. These things don't matter. None of this stuff matters. Turn on. I got a little scatter in there. You don't have to have scatter. It's, it's, it's very basic. Shade dynamics. Pen pressure. It's very simple. You know, and some of these settings may not matter to you. You may not like them. They really don't add much, you know. It's just personal little little ticks, little preferences. You know.
Yes. Perspective construction. Any style can be applied over perspective construction. I spent years just focusing on it. Versus like, here's how I draw noses. I just focused on how things are constructed. How to draw in perspective and then how shapes work, you know? And shape play. So perspective as a foundation, foundation, shape play and shape design secondary. And from there, you're able to construct figures any way you want. Realistically, you know, cartoonishly, whatever. Whatever you want to do. You want to do, you know, Adventure Time style stuff? You can. You want to do Jim Lee style? You can. You want to do realistic Alex Ross stuff? You can. You understand how perspective works. Then you work on shapes, three-dimensional shapes. And you learn realistic, you learn toys. You know, instead of drawing from pictures of Superman, get a statue, get a figure, even a ZBrush model, you know, for that matter. But draw from things that are three-dimensional so that you can learn how things are constructed. And then, once you have all those fucking things worked out, you can start to create your own design shapes, you know? And you can adjust them. It's not how you draw, it's all shape play, shape design. You can worry about shading and rendering, you know, after the fact. A lot of that stuff just gets used to cover up mistakes anyway. Don't feel bad, bro. That's exactly how I spent 2000, you know, my 2004 through 2006. And before that, all through the 90s, it was just uh, Bridgman's, Bridgman's Guide to Perspective, you know? And, like, working that, that out on my own, you know? And with, when Scott put out his Nomon DVDs around 2003, 2004, whenever those came out, maybe in 2002 even, uh, I found them and it was able to, like, he was able to, like, explain in a way all the things I knew but then organize it. You know, so I was able to take everything I knew up to that point and then restructure it. And in two years, I was able to, like, you know, piece it all together. You know, and I don't think it'll take you guys that long. It's just, you know, there's so much information. And I can, you, you can ask me questions. I had no one, I had no one to help me with that, you know, no one I could bounce these ideas off of. Or... So there was a lot of, like, my friends used to tell me I was overthinking. Oh, you don't have to, man. Just start drawing your comic. You know, none of those people are drawing anymore, by the way. <laughs> All my artist friends who told me what to do then ain't doing shit anymore. Yeah, that's, I would also recommend, too, while you're doing that, just, you know, for the sake of whatever, take a ZBrush modeling or 3D modeling, you know, intro to Maya, and just, just build some basic shit, too, in 3D, you know, just so you can start to train your brain to see three-dimensionally, you know. Look, you're going to eat up a year doing these little things, but that's how you merge them all, it's wax, the cars and the deck, paint the fence, you know, style shit that will help to retrain your, your brain. You know, they should be teaching you a three-dimensional and how to think that way, you know, early in life, but they don't. So you can really feel, you know, how these things connect and you can get a sense of tangibility in your head while you're drawing. You know? You don't have to be a great model or oh, this is what I'm gonna do to do a job. Now you just to get your head around things, you know. ZBrush is a little bit more intuitive, you know. I 
I found that to be more helpful than sitting around drawing nude models all fucking day. You know? I, I wasn't becoming... Great, I could watch naked people posing in their fucking socks. But, like, I care. Um, but I didn't understand how to draw the human... I didn't understand how the shapes connected, how the bones connected until I was able to model them. And assemble it together. You know, like, I'm just sitting there drawing people... You know, it's like fucking... You know, you're just doing, uh, you know, this stuff. You know, they're just like posing with the stick. It doesn't, you know, okay, next gestural, you know, and then you're like, see how he's committed to memory. Like, this isn't teaching me anatomy, you know? It's teaching me how to draw people sitting there posing for me. Like, yay, great. 300 later and I'm not any better. You know? <laughs> Understanding how things connect so that I can make newer things. Just, I get why it's there. But I believe it's, you know... It's not helping with what I need to do. So I, I chucked it out the door and focused on my own. What do I need to learn? What am I trying to do? And how can I learn and understand these things better? You know, and I don't care if all the books say you got to do it this other way. Like, I don't, I don't, I got to pay my own bills. Yeah. And I needed to learn how to like figure things out in perspective and foreshortening fast, right? So like, I just can't think of a faster way, unless you guys all know something that I don't know, you know? I mean, you know, like, like you, like I can't think of a faster way than blocking in silhouettes. You know? <laughs> but it was when I started 3D modeling, I, I got to understand how, I understand how everything connected. Memorizing poses that someone did in a classroom doesn't help. You know? Like if I, if I pitch this pose to an art director, he goes, oh, I like that, but I don't like the whatever. Can it be more where she's, like, down looking up? Well, then now I can... You know, that would be a little weird, but I can. I could draw the top of her head this way. But I could very quickly... block that in you know and then I can use Photoshop to maybe push a little bit and get myself a little bit of a it's probably a little too far but I can work it out like silhouettes and then building the shapes but it, it's understanding how everything's connected and I got that when I started 3d modeling and then 3d modeling gave me a giant case of carbal tunnel and I quit <laughs> so I'm hoping with uh, I'm gonna. I'm hoping with quill and those things that, like, sculpting in 3D or painting in three dimensionally will not do that. Yeah, knowing how to shoot. Because what happens when they ask you to do something you never done before? You know, and what happens if they're like, we want someone to run, like a flash pose, right? Right. Let's say I got 
the flash running right which I don't know like I'm just you know I know how these things you know one person up here and then the leg would stick down now let's say they want to change it you know you want to change it uh, or someone wants to change it you want to change it, and you want it more like like you want to start playing with the shapes right what if it needs to be more like a Mega Man thing you know and then you can come over and be like alright maybe the boots come this way you know this comes this I got this I got like a cannon you know maybe I can move the arm this way break it up a little bit give him like a little Mega Man glove maybe even like he's got those blades you know because I understand how the shapes work I can block them in you know but it takes the years to understand the shapes is what I'm trying to say like just sitting down tomorrow and saying well I'm just gonna start doing what Rob does doesn't fucking you know you're omitting the 10 plus years it took me to commit you know those things which is does by the way telling people this it's not helpful on a YouTube channel <laughs> <laughs> to be like, hey, get back to me in like four years, you know? You know, no one wants to hear that. They want to get better tomorrow. And I'm like, well, that's not going to happen. I mean, not in any meaningful way, you know? But you can start going down the path of like not fighting with yourself and not being frustrated like it's some magical fucking thing, you know? That will one day happen to me where I'll just have magical drawing power. I've seen ours. They think they're going to get these magical drawing powers. Like they just keep doing it over and over again. One day they'll just have this eureka moment where it all comes together and yay. You know? And for somebody out there that may have happened, but there's a, there's a process, a developing process. It's more like cooking. You know? Like, hey, anyone could sit down and make a recipe, right? But to do this shit at a professional level requires a certain level of time in. You gotta know how to julienne, right? You gotta know how to chop. You gotta know how to mince. You gotta know how to debone a fish. You gotta, know, you gotta know all those fucking things. But that isn't the fun shit. So, you know. And fuck, just knowing how to do it. Then you gotta do it every night, precisely at the exact same way. You know. Regardless of how you feel, regardless as if you're fighting with your boyfriend or girlfriend. Regard, like, it, or 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 you you go out of business. <laughs> you, know, you fail. Yeah, it's not anything like that. Yeah, it's a lot like that. It's like learning higher end math. Like if you wanted to code, you gotta learn a certain amount of algebra, or a lot of you know how to like. Fucking do multiplication and shit. You know? It's not like singing. Like, you're gonna be born with a certain level of talent with singing, and that's about the fucking end of it, you know? Yeah, well, you know, you know, you laugh about that. I had a guy in an art department once, right? Who uh, fancied himself. He's an art director now. And he fancied himself. He was the, the guy they all loved, you know? And he. This company bought out our company, and they brought him in. You know, he, he meets me, you know. And normally in t-shirts, basically, if you can draw... The idea is this. If you can draw, and you're doing t-shirts, it's because you're a loser. Because <laughs> you couldn't hack it as an artist. Never mind you, it's a regular paying gigs, you know. But uh, they shit on you. But this guy thought he would just watch my videos, and he'd see me working and drawing... And then he thought he was just going to learn how to, like, get it all figured out in a month or so, like anything else he does. You know, like, he, he became a DJ in a couple months, you know, fixed motorcycles in a couple months. Thought he was going to learn all this shit in a couple months. And, uh, yeah, he quit fast, you know.
And you know, I don't get worked up about it anymore because I know the process. I just sit back, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it looks great, dude. Yeah, keep at it. You can't wait to see more. Because I know you'll quit, you know? <laughs> They're not going to have the fortitude to sit the 100 hours in to, to, to make a game and form a cover like that. Yeah. With all the characters and the designs. and you know They're just not going to sit through it.
Hey, what's up? <clears throat> so why I don't go around telling people what programs they should use, you know? It's like, I just use Photoshop CS5. I know Photoshop really well. Been using it since 1995, you know? Um, I use an older version because it's stable, does everything I want it to do. I don't have to pay a monthly fee. I just bought it, you know, a long time ago. Uh, I've tried all the newer versions. I try them all, you know. And then I, they glitch or have issues, and I just I just stick with my my tools at this point. I don't have to pay a monthly fee to my pencil either, you know. So that's nice. Mirror planes. We talk about mirroring. Uh, it's hard for me too. Yeah, well, m mirroring is. <clears throat> he he's going to show you how to do it the right way, right? Like, I kind of have it committed to memory. But basically what you're talking about with mirroring is that, so you have a line, you know, and you want this half of the drawing to be the same as this half. So what it comes from is being able to find center, finding center of any object. And once you can find center around any object, like you know where center is, you can then find center over here uh, and then duplicate your efforts and build upward. So you're able to build upward, right? Find center and then go see this would connect down here. There would be center. So I know center's here. This comes out this way. Same center's always like wherever the four points meet and you build upward. So mirroring is about finding center and duplicating. You know, and it's very tedious and technical when you first do it. And if it gives you a headache, then you're probably doing it right. Uh, thanks, Reginald. I appreciate it. Um, I've done it. I've done it. I could find some old ass art if you want to see me to prove. You know, I've done it plenty. Um, uh, where's my old backup? Old, random old files. This is old stuff. I need to bring over bridge. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of my older work because it was all scanned and deleted. I was I was on a CD drive that corrupted back in the early two thousands, um, but. I did manage to do some hard drive retrieval a long time ago. Um, let's see, I have a couple of older examples in here. This is old stuff, folks. Yeah, there's this one, it's a little. Like I drew this doing the center thing back in 2004. This is 2004. That was like the cleaner. Where's a there's a construction version. It's somewhere around here. I wonder if it's in uh, my old portfolio. Let me look at this. Uh, 
file, presentations, old stuff. Sometimes I have a hard time looking at it from that angle. Uh, now resume. Let me see. My old. These are my old resumes. A long time ago. Extra samples are all life model sketches I did back in the day. So you can see here, like this is me doing like a in and out style restaurant and I created this logo with this Fox, this Fox burger. It's for a class project called Fox burger. Look, Fox burger, huh? Forgot. But you can see I had constructed this all from center. Eight and a half by 11 drawing, you know. And there you can see there's the boxes for Fox Town. And then that was the final bit over it. So I've done it all, you know, the hard way. And right there is where, you know, you're building these center points and you're building up and so forth and so forth. And this is old, old stuff. And there's all my gestures. Yay, Rob. All my old stuff. Old stuff. With mirror, when you're learning how to draw from center and mirroring, <clears throat> my advice is, is to start small. Yeah, but I didn't really learn how to draw much there. I went to the Art Institute, and I learned how to do a lot of 3D and video. Even though I was in a 2D animation class, I kind of canceled it and switched us all to 3D. So while I was in school, wasting money, uh, I learned how my, taught myself how to draw, uh, got myself full-time work uh, as an artist, and freelanced. Yeah, I had to self-teach self myself even though I paid 70 fucking thousand dollars for art school. Which I have paid off. I'm still in art school. I mean, the whole reason why I record these videos is because I forget how I do this shit. So... <laughs> Basically just record this so I can go back and watch me do it later on. Like when I go to do some more saucy paintings, I'll go back and watch my saucy videos, my real times, and like some of my speed videos. I'll go, okay, how did I, oh, that's how I did that. All right, gotcha. You know? Well, there's lots of basic useful information out there, man. It's just not gonna happen overnight, right? So, learning perspective, learning construction, learning to think three-dimensionally. If you're going to color, learning how to understand light and where light falls and how to render shapes using light. But in order to render shapes using light, you have to understand how they're three-dimensional. You can see surfaces, right? Yeah. It's a real fucking waste of time. And I had put on... I was 142 pounds when I started. I was a little underweight. Uh, when I left, I was 210 pounds, 220, you know, it was, it was real not, not a happy time in my life, so from about 2000, the end of 2001 to 2007, or 6, I can't remember what it was, might have been the end of 2006, 
Yeah, I'll check it out. Not right now, but I will. What time is it? All right, oh, we're on. We're on track. Things are getting done. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I can color from grayscale. I tend to use gradient maps as a base and then paint over if I'm going to do that way. I mean, with grayscale, you're, all you're doing is focusing on the value, right? And then you work out color. But I tend to do, um, instead of a bunch of overlay passes to glaze, I tend to use gradient maps as a base now when I'm going to go that route. And then I'll paint on top of that to add details and whatnot. Yeah, I've done that. I've done it a bunch of different ways, like uh, depends on how you want to do it. But I mean, I've done uh, Where's a good example of that? Um, it's not in the main. So this was all done in grayscale and color with gradient maps. It's more of a painted look to it, right? All these turtles were the same way they were done in whatever, you know, this was all done in grayscale, so, so forth and so forth, uh, this, this slash painting was entirely digital, done in grayscale at gradient maps a while back, um, all the concept art I'm doing now for game companies are being painted in grayscale at gradient maps, I just can't show anything right now, so. but eventually I will, and when I do I'll show you how I do it, you know. So I mix, you know, I just, I mix. It's my DeviantArt. All my links are at sketchcraft.com. So if you go to sketchcraft.com, uh, it's my main website. All my links are right here at the top, right? Facebook, Pinterest, it's my DeviantArt. So... That should not be... Hmm. I gotta fix this. It should not be forwarding to my Tumblr. <sighs> I'll go in and fix it later. I should have a page now. Yeah, everyone says that, I just don't know what I would do. I got enough to do right now, I can't add more. Once a month I'll make a video that I just don't really know what to, to deal with that. Yeah. I can't add more work to my schedule. And I don't like telling people, support me on Patreon, go to my Patreon. I can't, I can't do that 15 times a day. I'll lose my fucking mind. You know, <laughs> I get it. I get it. I just I I I support two Patreons right now. So the Schmodown and my buddy Shane. So I I pay ten bucks a month for the guys to get their stuff. You know.
I always feel like it's a, uh, it's like a bad dare. Like, support me on Patreon or I'm going to stop doing what? You know? <laughs> I'm going to stop drawing. You're not going to get any of this. You know? Sometimes. I, I don't have a lot of time for it, man. They take hours upon hours. So I'll do quick art tip videos, like live, no editing. You know, sometimes if people have a specific question. So if you go on the art tips playlist, you can see them there. You know, but if I'm, I'm, I'm I can't spend my, I don't want to be a teacher, right? So a lot of the art Patreons are either based around drawing porn or teaching. So it's like I'd have to spend all my time making videos on techniques. I, I, I think you guys learn better when I'm just sitting here drawing my actual work. This is actual paid work. You know. I think there's more to be gleaned from watching someone do what they do at the level in which they get paid to do it versus me sitting around having hypothetical conversations about things that I think people like Scott Robertson are more qualified more qualified to teach than I am. Don't have a lot of patience for it. You know. So. But if you have questions you'd like me to cover on art tips, and I can do it, you know, in about 10, 15 minutes, then just, you know, leave it in the comments or whatever, message me directly, and I, I make them, you know. Every now and then I'll do a, a Kickstarter called Digibooks, where I'll kind of collect the work that I've done and do uh, stuff there that I sell. Um, it's been a couple years. So I, I try to alternate every other year. So once I get through these power prints, uh, I'll be doing another one of those. I get it. It's frustrating, you know. <laughs> be real nice if Rob just made some videos on how to like do what he's doing right here, on um, like 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 this. <laughs> But this is just a lot of the same stuff done over and over again. Faces. And I'll delete that. So now I got to block in all of her shit. <laughs> fire and water and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, there I drew the fire. Hmm, how to draw water. I just paint it in. Interesting. Maybe. Depends on the kind of project. There's no one way to do it. If they want it realistic, then just Photoshop the fire. <laughs> if they want stylized, like there. Interesting. I'll consider that. Yeah, so this is going to have a giant Dreamcast controller with the arcade cabinet and the gems and all the other characters. So I got to. in the world. What time is it? It's 325. Alright. Ah! No! Damn it. I just fucking dropped my lamp. You little bastard. Caught it. Yeah. Alright. What was I doing? Oh, that's what fell on my mouse. Oh, come here, mouse. Where'd you go? Where did the mouse go? Go find the mouse. Ah, so 
is annoying. One second, guys. There it is. Uh, no, nah, I don't. I don't make profile picks, man. Sorry. I don't take on any projects right now. I got enough to do. <clears throat> what is my channel? I'm under Sketchcraft. All right, everybody, so I'll be back on uh, around 8, and we're going to block in all these plushies and control or get all these roughed in. Get all the final stuff for that worked in, and then uh, I can get to the inks and stuff. So I'll probably add more little textures and stuff here on our scabbard and stuff. Uh, I'll take a step back and look at it. Thanks for hanging out, Chris. Cola, Curtis Shelton. Nice. All right. Peace, everybody. I got to go. Got to go. Got to go.